I know it's Mac the Knife. Um, is it... Oh, Christ. So many people have done covers of it. I don't think it's Bobby Darren. Is it Bobby Darren? God. I should be... Oh, wow. I'm just looking at myself yeah. on the screens. I'm pitting bad. <laughs> That's all right. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. That's uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Mrs. Robinson. I don't know the name of the album, though. It was from uh, The Graduate. Yeah, great movie. Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, you know what the future is? Plastics. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's weird. That's very weird. Um, I like the harmonies. I, I love the way, I mean, Simon and Garfunkel always played with harmonies so well. You know, their, their voices blended so well. Um, the guitars. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's almost like your head is inside the acoustic, you know, it just sounds really good. Especially for the late 60s when, you know, technology was still kind of trying to catch up with the imagination of the artist. You, that you just got that really good earthy tone to the acoustics and, and everything. And then the chorus is just huge, you know. It's one of my favorite songs they've ever done. Michael McDonald, What a Fool Believes. Good jam. I, I think this really kind of brought, because you had this and then you had, uh, I keep forgetting, uh, keep forgetting, we're not in love anymore. I mean, this was like the Michael McDonald era. Nice. This was the reemergence of Tina Turner. A good song is a good song. I mean, there's, there's a reason that this song has endured. Too, you know, I, I think if it were just the backstory, people wouldn't care so much, you know. But it's still a great song, you know, and and it, it's just a kind of a testament to her talent, you know, that she can take a song like this and really give it everything she's got, you know. I mean, which she's done like her whole career. So, I mean, I, I think I think it would have stood pretty strong whether that was a, an issue or not. Her voice is amazing. Yeah. She's such a great singer. Um, I agree with you. I think a great song is a great song as far as the backstory. Green Day. Great album. American Idiot. Love that album. I, know, I like that, that album. You like that album? I like that album. It's a fantastic rock album. I love the fact that it won Record of the Year because it was, I think, was the first time in a long time that a rock album had won. So. When they won, I was like over the moon. You know, I was like, finally, jeez. But obviously it takes, you know, a monumental success story for a rock album to win record of the year. Whereas, you know, sometimes it's a band nobody's heard of and it's like, oh yeah, no, they, they got record of the year. And it's like, really? Are you kidding me? So good for them. I, I love Green Day. I'm a huge fan. The girl from Ipanema, but I don't know, is it Lulu? Oh my goodness. Nancy Sinatra, maybe? No? I don't know. It's Astrid Gilberto with Stan Getz. Never in a million years would I have gotten that. I don't even know what you said. All I heard was <laughs> no idea what that name is. It's definitely a Muzak stand standby, you know? I mean, or a staple, actually. Um, it, honestly, every time I hear it now, I, I think of that scene in um, oh, that crazy horror movie um, where they're on a ship and there's like the, the Leviathans kind of coming through and and uh, they're all like the, like the survivors, are, they all jump into the elevator to get away from it and it's playing and and uh, something like somebody hears a noise and somebody goes, what was that? And one of the guys who's kind of the comic relief just goes, girl from Epanina.